Well, g'day, curd nerds. Today, we're making charous. So charous is, was originally made in France, as many good cheeses are. It's a white mold lactic set cheese. And it only takes 14 days for this little fuzzy coating to appear uh, all over the cheese. Um, it won't go soft in the center like camembert does because it's not really set with, with rennet like camembert is. This is meant to be eaten quite quickly and quite fresh. Um, to store it, you would put it into a micro perforated wrap and it'll probably only last another couple of weeks after this. It wouldn't go too much further than that um, because the white mold would start to uh, create something called skin slip where the white mold will start to slip off and it'll be just runny under the surface. But like I said, because it's lactic set, uh, as in the curds were set using lactic acid created by uh, starter cultures only and only a tiny bit of rennet, uh, it doesn't go gooey in the middle. Anyway, let me show you how I made shrews. So start off by sanitizing your equipment. Uh, I'm just uh, fluffing up the bag there to get rid of the cream. Mix it into the milk. The ingredients for shrews is four liters or one gallon of cow's milk that's been pasteurized and unhomogenized. One eighth of a teaspoon of aromatic mesophilic culture. I used Mad Millie Fresh Culture. One thirty-second of a teaspoon of Penicillium Candidum. One thirty-second of a teaspoon of Geotrichum Candidum 15. One quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 milliliters of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. And two drops of single strength liquid rennet. I'm using IMCU 200. Diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water and you'll need some non-iodized salt. So heat your milk to 25 degrees Celsius or 77 Fahrenheit. I'm using a precision cooker and a water bath there to heat my milk. Then we're going to add the aromatic mesophilic culture. I just got a single use sachet there which inoculates 4 litres of milk. Then add the molds. Firstly, Penicillium candidum. Just sprinkle that over the surface of the milk. And then the Geotrichum candidum. And do the same. So I'm just using level teaspoons there. Don't use heaped ones. Pop the lid on and we're going to allow it to rehydrate for five minutes. So five minutes later, stir in the starter culture and the moulds. And then we're going to add the calcium chloride. So there's no ripening time uh, for this cheese. Now we're going to add the rennet. Let's pour the rennet solution in and give it a stir. Stir for no more than one minute. So pop the lid back on and we're going to allow the curds to set for 12 hours. Remembering the tiny amount of rennet that we put in there, it takes a long time to coagulate the milk. Now you can see that there's about one centimeter or half an inch of whey on the surface of the curds and that's perfect and you'll see the curds have pulled away from the sides of the pot as well. So remove the heat. So I'm just turning off my precision cooker there and unplugging it, getting it out the way. So place four small baskets on a mat on a large board. More about the baskets later on. So ladle off the excess whey. Now you can't use it for ricotta because it's too acidic. So I'm just pouring it down the sink there. Once you've got rid of most of that whey, then we're going to take slices of the curd using a skimmer and transfer it to each basket evenly. Now 
Now you can see the way is running fairly clear there, so we're doing a pretty good job. And transfer all the curds until they're used up. Don't be tempted to add any more baskets. Four is enough, trust me. So keep topping it up until you've used all of the curds. So this may take about one hour, and it did for me. I just set a timer every 15 minutes I came back and I topped up the baskets with more curds. Now I've sped this footage up and you can see it draining quite well. So once all the curds have used up, then allow it to drain overnight. Don't forget to put an umbrella on top. So remove each cheese and flip them over and put them back into their baskets. This will create a even surface on the bit that's a bit rough. So drain for 24 hours so the cheese firms up and can hold its shape when it's out of the basket. So cover them up again, so 24 hours later, you can see they've shrunk even more. So flip each cheese over again and then put them back in their baskets. And now we're going to salt the cheese, so salt the top with quarter of a teaspoon of non-iodized salt, uh, allow one hour in between uh, so this and the next salting so that the salt can be absorbed into the cheese. There we go, pop the rolly back on and come back in an hour. So an hour later we've got a little brine on top so we're just going to flip the cheeses over, put them back in their baskets again. And now we're going to sprinkle a quarter of a teaspoon of salt on the other side of the cheese. And once again, we're going to allow another hour for the salt to be absorbed. You don't need to salt the sides. Top and bottom is sufficient. Pop the brolly back on again. So after that hour, it's now time to put them into a ripening box. I did this mainly because I wanted to use the kitchen sink area. So I wanted to be able to get them out of the way, out of the sink area. So clean off your mat. Dry it off with some paper towel. And now we're going to put each cheese that has been salted into the ripening box on the mat. Now just make sure that they are spaced apart, they're not touching each other. Now I'm going to put the umbrella back on top. I did move it later on over to the kitchen side, but allow these cheeses to drain overnight. So the next day, I'm just going to pour off any of the whey. There we go, there's a fair bit that have has accumulated there. Just going to turn the cheeses over again, so flip them over on the mat, allowing enough space so they're not touching each other. And then put them back into the ripening box again. I'm just banging a little bit because it was some whey collected on the mat. There we go, back into the ripening box. So now we're going to cover with the lid and we're going to ripen at 10 to 13 Celsius or 50 to 55 Fahrenheit for two weeks. We're going to turn daily and remove any whey that accumulates in the bottom of the box. So one week later, you should have mold growth over most of the cheese. I'm just going to take it out of its box there. There was a little bit of whey on the bottom of the box. I tipped that out before. 
and just flip them over. So by turning them daily, you ensure that the mold doesn't stick to the mat when you turn them over. So daily turning is essential. So as you can see there, even after one day, the mold has stopped growing on the bottom. Uh, that's why you turn them over. Well, that was fairly easy-ish. Probably more of an intermediate cheese than a beginner's cheese. I certainly wouldn't start off with this because you really got to know when the curds are ready to be scooped into uh, the baskets. So I have a stock of these online. They're the small, soft cheese basket. As that's what I've called them anyway. Um, and they're about eight centimetres high, um, eight centimetres across the top and about seven to 7.5 down the bottom. So they are stackable. I do have a swag of them here, which means a lot in Australia. Um, so yeah, so they are great little baskets. For this recipe, you'll need four uh, of these baskets uh, to, to get successful shrews. At a pinch, you could use camembert baskets, but they're a bit wide. Um, they're more like, uh, I think they're about 10 centimeters across. So a little bit wider than these. Um, and you won't get these nice little um, tall, sort of narrowy sorts of cheese uh, like Charousse is. I'll take the rest out of the ripening box and then we'll have a taste test. Uh, so, just so you can see here. So there's the rest of them. One of them has started just at the back here. The skin has just come away a little bit. I must have flicked it with my finger or something. But they're very delicate little things. They've got a nice mold coverage uh, all over, which is really good. Uh, they've got some crinkles starting to go on or some little brain-like patterns because of um, uh, the geo that I put in there. Um, so that's starting to happen. This one's a little bit wonky because that's how it came out of the basket. But they're all looking pretty good. I'll leave the rest of them on the mat and I'll take put it back in the box, but um, I won't ripen these any further uh, because that'll be criminal and they'll start to get skin slip. But let's try them. Let's have a smell first. It smells a little bit like honey, uh, the outside. Um, they're firm to touch. They're not mushy or gooey on the inside. There's a really good mold coverage, a little bit less on the bottom. I only turned this um, a day ago. Uh, it takes a little while for the mold to grow back over again. But yeah, great looking little cheese, very presentable, that's for sure. And I do like the little brain-like squiggly lines that are starting to happen with the geo, so that's very impressive. Anyway, let's cut into it. All you need is a sharp knife. With this sort of cheese, we just cut a wedge uh, into it. And hopefully it comes out. There we go. Look at that. So it kind of looks like um, a cream cheese on the inside. Uh, and essentially, if you look at the recipe, it kind of is. It's like cream cheese that's been put into a basket. Um, but yeah, a very interesting looking texture. The white mold on the outside hasn't created any runniness at all. These are two weeks old. Uh, but the paste is, is soft. So, interested in what it tastes like are you <laughs> oh goodness me let's have a look let's have a taste so like I said it smells a little bit like honey which is fabulous I like good honey this would be good if you, you could actually drizzle honey on top when you serve it up but let's try some shall we mmm mmm the creaminess and the slight tartness, just slight. A um, little bit of mushroomy sort of flavors coming in from the, um, uh, the penicillium candidum and the geo uh, on the outside. That hasn't really moved too much into the inside of the cheese. Mmm, really nice, very good cheese. Very spreadable too. This is quite soft. So you could 
Um, you could spread some of this on toast or little crackers. Mm. This is lovely, perfectly salted too. If I do say so myself. You can see the inside there. Um, it's the same texture all the way through. So I'll cut off just a little bit more. Probably because it's very tasty. Oh, so good. And you can see the inside there. Uh, the paste doesn't discolour from the edge to the centre. It's the same all the way through. Uh, and great. And, and the skin's not slipping. So, yeah, absolutely perfect. Well done, Gav. <laughs> uh, you'll be able to make this. No problems at all. Great little cheese. Now, you could make this. This is typically a cow's milk cheese. Um, you could make it with goat's milk. It'll have a little tarty flavour like goat's milk cheeses tend to do. But as a milk, uh, a cow's milk cheese, this is uh, subtle, um, creamy, uh, some great little uh, mushroomy sort of flavours on the edge. Um, but overall, it's it's like something, uh, it's like nothing I've, ne I've had before um, in the cheese world. So I, ca I can't even compare it to say the um, Bloomy Goat Blue, which is a, a lactic set goat's cheese that I made um, that had ash as well. Uh, but yeah, that flavour was totally different because of the goat's milk. This is a great little um, mould ripened cheese. So perfect for a platter. You'd have to be pretty quick though, because I dare so like I said, they're only gonna last about another two weeks. Not because I'm gonna eat them all quickly, but because like I said, they will ripen to a point where they'll start to go gooey under the rind of the cheese. Anyway, that's how you make charouse. So thanks for watching. Now, like I said, don't forget, we've got lots of these baskets over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. It's the small, soft cheese basket, perfect for charouse and other small lactic set cheeses. Lots of holes, good drainage. Uh, and I didn't have too many problems with them, as you saw in the video. And if you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And tell me what you would use your charouse for if you made it. How would you cook with it? How would you eat it? Let me know in the comments below. That would be absolutely fantastic. Well, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.